positive legacy of the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics is ensured. International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach said this when the Games ended. What does the success mean for the world? And with the Ukraine flashpoint revealing the deep divide between Russia and the West, where do the roots of the crisis lie? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Dishin. What does the success of Beijing 2022 mean for the world? At the closing ceremony of the Beijing Winter Olympics last Sunday, International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach said the positive legacy of the Games is ensured. What's the legacy and what have we witnessed as the unifying power of sports? I'm pleased to be joined from Zhang Jiakou, one of the three competition zones, by Yang Yang, chairperson of the Athletes Committee of the Beijing Organizing Committee for the 2022 Winter Olympic Games, or Bocock. She won China's historic first Winter Olympic gold and women's 500 meter short track speed skating at Salt Lake City in 2002. I'm also pleased to be joined by Xu Ji Cheng, Director General of Media Operations Department at Bocock, joining us from the main media center. Welcome to the point and congratulations on the successful hosting of the Games. But first, a few facts and figures now that things have settled. We know that uh, a total of almost 2,900 athletes from 91 delegations or national on Olympic committees uh, participated in 15 disciplines and 109 events, including six new ones. A total of two world records were set in, and 17 Olympic records. Now, 29 National Olympic Committees won medals, and two of these delegations competed for the first time. Three of them sent women athletes for the first time, and one such delegation won gold for the first time. And uh, in wrap up of the Games, IOC President Thomas Bach presented the Olympic Cup to the people of China as a token of appreciation. Young yeah, let me go to you. How would you describe the results and effect of this game without, you know, host bias? Has it met the expectations from the world? Um, the result from uh, from uh, these games, I mean, from the operation point of view, I think it's uh, we we had a confidence before before the games, and uh, as we uh, as we uh, confidence, everything is going smoothly. Uh, but the, the outcome on the other side is uh, the um, how the people will come the Olympics is uh, it's uh, more than I thought. I think the same with Xu uh, Jicheng uh, So that's uh, um, definitely very inspiring and definitely it's a great result. I'm so excited and so happy to see that. Mm, now you're in quarantine after weeks of hard work. It's indeed well deserved. Uh, Mr. Xu, do you echo Yang Yang's words that uh, the results, the outcome really exceeded uh, people's expectations? Uh, yes, of course. And uh, you know, all the uh, facts and the figures and the behind them are the common, is the, uh, is the hard work and the common target together by all of our friends and, uh, and uh, from the uh, Olympic stakeholders, but I would like to call them the friends. It's like the athletes, like the NOCs all around, as you mentioned, and uh, 91 of them, and also the medias. Of course, the medias, they are the uh, most is the, uh, active and uh, most is the uh, the viewers of, of for the for the events. So without the, the common efforts by all the uh, friends and the Olympic cannot be uh, successful like this. And uh, also like uh, President Bach uh, once mentioned that I, I remember this before the uh, Tokyo game has said an Olympic game is the most is the uh, difficult and the huge and the jigsaw in the world. You put all the things together not together but you put all them together properly so in that case i uh, fully couldn't agree more with uh, young young about the results and we saw today mm -hmm. but that is only the first half of the game and i think uh, two weeks later we'll have the para olympic games right so it's also para another game and uh, 
will be the same successful. Hmm. Well, definitely uh, the very best luck in that. Um, a, a few figures for Team China, uh, which has uh, really set records both in terms of the gold medals it has pocketed and the overall number of medals. Nine golds, 15 overall medals uh, coming up third. Uh, in the official Olympic medal table, Yang Yang. So um, a lot of uh, the records were also set for, um, for, for by the Chinese athletes. Um, last time during the Olympic Games, Winter Olympic Games in the Republic of Korea, China's performance was nine, go nine medals altogether with only one gold. So what led to this stunning progress? Uh, since uh, Ping Chang, uh, definitely the much bigger investment uh, than the last term, uh, last uh, four years. So in the last four years, before uh, Tokyo, we, well, before Ping Chang, we had we definitely last four years we have invested more. Um, but not only investment with the money, but also, for example, we have a uh, uh, hundred of uh, uh, overseas uh, foreign coaches in uh, in different uh, uh, events, different sports, and so we also um, recruiting a lot of athletes from different sports. Um, transfer actually we call transfer the athlete from sports to sports, and make sure they are talented is as uh, uh, has, has found. So uh, definitely bigger investment make make a, it really works. And of course, uh, competing in uh, in the home country that's another benefit. Mm -hmm. As always, uh, I can I I really jealous actually from my experience. I never competed Olympics in my home country, but definitely from this Olympics, I can see how athlete was encouraged and how uh, how 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 can they uh, get the support from the from the people from the country from the team. So it's definitely make a difference. Right. Well, I'm going to ask you a question about gender balance because according to the IOC, Beijing 2022 is the most gender balanced Winter Olympics so far. About 45% of athletes were women and it had the highest number of women events as well. How do you feel about that, Yang Yang? That's another uh, record we made for, for the Olympic history. And uh, I, in the, uh, I, I was in the Olympic program uh, in IOC uh, for two years as a member. And the re recent years, IOC is really putting efforts to uh, promoting uh, women's participation in the Olympic Games. And of course, for example, we have uh, six new events in the uh, Beijing uh, Winter Olympic Games. And uh, one of the criteria, you must have a women athlete include. Mm. So, uh, so that helps as well. And uh, definitely, it's very encouraging to see more uh, female athletes compete in the Olympics, as right. we we saw from the previous from the the, the Winter Games. They're right. so they, they did so well, and I believe their performance is inspiring more girls to come to sports. Mm. Um, sustainability. I, uh, and can, I, can I add in something absolutely, uh, yeah. to support kind of young young view and opinions? Uh, that's the same thing happened in the media. Mm. We got almost 10,000 medias and also we had a record and got more uh, female reporters and announcers and commentators and uh, and work for the Olympic game. I think that can make the games more an emotion and more colorful. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, actually, the broadcasting uh, efforts made by the host country, including by China Media Group, has been highly praised by the IOC and it has uh, uh, pocketed record numbers. I mean, IOC president said only on IOC's Olympic social media accounts they had seen three billion interactions. And uh, besides being the most watched Winter Games in China, in Europe, after only four days, the total number of streaming viewers on one channel surpassed Pyeongchang's total viewership. So um, why the interest, um, Mr. Xu? Why the interest and what do you think technology has played in that role? Well, there's, uh, I think, at least three uh, reasons behind it. And the first one is the new technology. Uh, actually, it's not new, but it's the most reliable technologies and used in the past uh, Olympic Games or World Mega Events. 
and like the remote production, or they call them. Uh, that means uh, like the OBS cloud, and that means uh, you can use the cloud technique and put your uh, editors behind at home, and far away at home. They don't have to come to Beijing and uh, the very uh, hot and the tough mm. is the challenge at the end of the pandemic. But they can work in the, at their home, even in their gar garage. But the cloud is like the B1, like the broadcasting one, and everybody can work on it and put all possibilities of the, like a gray face and like the uh, slow motion and uh, together make it more attractive. And for uh, other techniques like the 8K and 4K live virtual reality and the coverage, uh, whatever, I'm not actually a technical person, but I know all these techniques were used and bring the uh, audience all around the world and get into a situation, get in, into uh, a way to watch the game. We call it the immersive experience. Mm. That means you can watch the game from the view of the athletes. You can right. watch the game from 300 degrees all around. And the second uh, reason I keep think it short, personally, please. Yeah, keep not, it short. Just, just yeah, just, yeah, just, just to, because to other uh, people want to see something exciting and they encourage inspiring things like this. Just like the uh, the light in the tunnel, in the, in the end of the tunnel. So that's the main reason. Right. Behind. Yeah, uh, another point which has been really emphasized is sustainability. Uh, we know that uh, the IOC has said that. Uh, the Beijing 2022 is on track to become carbon neutral. For instance, five venues have been reused from the summer to the winter games. All venues are powered by renewable energy, the very first in history. And natural CO2 refrigeration system was used for the very first time in China and at the games in four ice venues. Yang Yang, throughout uh, the organization and in your work as athlete um, chief, how do you see the importance of sustainability here? Uh, as I said before, no sustainability, no future of Olympics. So it is very, very important. And uh, as you already introduced, all the equipment, all the venues, we, we save energy as much as we can. But on top of that, I think more, more, the most successful sustainability program is the 300 million people participate in winter sports which is going to keep the Olympic legacy uh, going forward, move on in for the future. So very, very important. Indeed, and that's an aspect that uh, uh, many people don't think of so often. But uh, time is so limited. You have a lot of work to do still and preparing for the Paralympic Games. All the very best. And thank you very much to Yang Yang and uh, Xu Jicheng joining us from Bokok. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we look at the developments in Ukraine and help you understand China's stand. Stay with us. Making sense of the overwhelming wave of information means cutting through the noise to shine a light on the heart of the story and making room for new perspectives. True understanding means the ability to see events from more than one side. I'm Liu Xin, and this is The Point.